The big question that we want to try to answer is why brains need to sleep. We know that we need to sleep, we know that the flies need to sleep, and if we continuously sleep deprive a fly for three or four days, then eventually they'll die. So sleep seems to be doing something important. Over the past several decades, there's been quite a lot of research going in to try to identify what these functions might be. Um, and sleep seems to be regulated based on two different mechanisms. The first of these is the circadian clock. So we have a, a clock in our brains that tells us what time of day it is. Um, it tells us when it's, it's nighttime and it makes us tired to go to sleep then and then wake up in the morning. Um, the genes that control this clock were first identified in the fruit fly um, almost 50 years ago um, and then have been conserved across evolution all the way up into our brains. The second mechanism that controls sleep is, is a homeostatic mechanism. So we know if, if we're awake all night either partying or in the lab doing an experiment, then we're more tired the next day and we need to nap or go to bed early the next night in order to feel normal again. Um, there's all kinds of consequences that come with being tired, um, including not being able to form memories quite as well or, or attend to things that we should be doing. Um, but we don't really know what is malfunctioning in the brain to cause these deficits, and that's what we're trying to, trying to identify. The ideas for this project um, started when I was a graduate student, when we were looking for neurons in the fly brain that might be able to be switched on um, to regulate sleep in the fly. We found one set of neurons that project to an area of the brain called the dorsal fan-shaped body, which when we activated, um, the flies went right to sleep. The story that we tell in this neuron paper identifies a, a particular gene that works within the, the dorsal fan-shaped body neurons to regulate sleep. Without this, this gene, um, flies sleep less than they should and are unable to make up sleep that they've lost. So effectively, these, these flies are like insomniac people. Um, they're unable to get the sleep that they need and then um, have different consequences as a result. So our flies don't learn very well. We wanted to find out what was broken in the mutants, right? We know the mutants can sleep or don't sleep as much as, as the wild type. We know these neurons were, were the ones affected. So by comparing the properties of the wild types and the mutants, we were able to realize that um, their electrical properties are, are sort of um, messed up. So, so they basically, it's like almost they're, they're uh, in a short circuit, basically. Most of the cells in mutant flies are not able to generate action potentials at all, and those that are able to cannot do it as efficiently as in the control flies. So they would need a lot more, to be pushed a lot harder in order to de generate some action potentials. The results from this paper um, give us a basic mechanism for, for how the sleep homeostat might work. Um, so hopefully in the future we can start to look for this type of mechanisms in, in other species of animals. So the misconception is that always the smaller the animal you work in, the less important it is, right? But I think people working, I don't know, from monkey to mice, right, in the mammalian system, sometimes they, they get focused on the tiny detail of a tiny detail of a network, right? And I think by looking into um, the fruit, fruit fly, you can actually uncover, I mean, it, the paper is one example, you can uncover a big process, a, a big something of how uh, the nervous system is achieving some task, right? In this case, it's sleep, it could be coding an odor, it could be, you know, writing a memory. Uh, so I think sometimes, the system itself might be simpler, but the, the significance of the finding is, is bigger.